Hello my schoolers, this is my school channel where we are tackling the 2018 jam pass question for chemistry. In this clip, we'll be solving questions number 23 to number 44. So now we are solving question number 23. Methanoic acid reacts with water, sorry, methanoic acid mixes with water in all proportions and has about the same boiling point as water. To confirm this, the boiling point of formic acid or methanoic acid is 100.8, while the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So they are super close. Which of the following methods would you adopt to obtain pure water from a mixture of sand, water, and methanoic acid? So let's see all of the options and see which one we can really adopt. Let's start from the base, which is option C and D, neutralization with sodium hydroxide. Okay, so this is what happens when we react methanoic acid or formic acid with sodium hydroxide, you are going to get sodium formate and this is also soluble in water to become sodium formate solution, okay? And this solution also has boiling point of 100.6, okay? So which is also very close to that of water which is 100. So you can still separate this using fractional distillation or simple distillation because for fractional distillation for its efficiency, there should be at least a difference of 10 degrees Celsius, which we do not have here, okay? So that makes us to consider option A, extractive distillation. This is used to um, obtain the kind of solvent we want, okay? When two mixable liquids are involved. And we also use this extractive distillation so that as a tropic mixtures will not be formed. You may ask, so what is an azotrope? An azotrope is a mixture, okay, that has a constant boiling point because the vapor has the same composition as a liquid mixture, okay. So, for the sake of the maximum azotrope present, okay, so we use extractive distillation. I believe you still want more information on this extractive distillation. Kindly go to the My School website. The link has been provided description below where you will see further explanation are provided just for you so the correct option is a extractive distillation is used to obtain pure water from a mixture of sand water and methanoic acid question 24 a quantity of electricity liberates 3.6 grams of silver from its salt okay what mass of aluminium will be liberated from its salt by the same quantity of electricity okay remember this is a question on electrolysis okay so recall that we know that 96,500 coulombs okay will discharge one mole of silver from its salt and the molar mass of silver here is 108 okay so, if 96,500 will discharge 108, therefore, what quantity of electricity will discharge 3.6 grams of silver? We cross multiply, okay? So, we have 3.6 times 96,500, okay? Equals x times 108. Dividing both sides by 108. Okay, so when we divide this, we should have 3,217 or 3,216.6.6. If we approximate, we have 3,217. Okay, so this is the column, the column charge or the quantity of electricity required to discharge 3.26. Okay, of silver from its salt. So the question now goes further and it says, what mass of aluminium will be liberated from its salt by the same quantity of electricity? So readily we know that aluminium has three valence electrons. That would be three times 96,500, okay? We discharge one mole of aluminium a ion, okay? And that is 27. 
Therefore, this quantity of electricity, 3217, okay, we discharge X. So let's cross multiply once again. So we'd have X times 3 times 96500, okay, equals 27 times 3217. So if we divide both sides by the coefficient of X, so therefore X will be equals to 27 times 3217 over 3 times 96500, isn't it? So 3 year 1, 3 year 9. By the time we multiply this and divide it together, we should get roughly an answer of 0 0.3 grams. So if we scan through our options together, option D is very correct. Here we have question 25. Suitable reagents for the laboratory preparation of nitrogen are what? So at first you have to recall the laboratory preparation of nitrogen. One of them is thermal decomposition of ammonium dioxynitrate 3. Okay? Although this reaction is not safe because it is very exothermic, it may even become explosive. And even the product you are going to get is unstable. It, um, it forms back again as soon as it decomposes. So this is what they do. They bring in reagents like sodium dioxynitrate 3 and ammonium chloride, okay? Which they mix together in 7 ratio 5. Okay, and this in turn produces ammonium dioxynitrate 3. And this ammonium dioxynitrate 3 further decomposes to give you nitrogen and steam, pure nitrogen and steam. So, in summary, we can say conclusively that the suitable reagents for the laboratory preparation of nitrogen are sodium dioxynitrate 3 and ammonium chloride, option A. So, do not forget that the link in the description below is provided for you so you can be taken to the MySchool website where you can be guided on how to get the MySchool mobile app or purchase the MySchool software which will help you better prepare for your coming exams. So, let's start with question number 26. The number of electrons in the valence shell of an element of atomic number 14 is what? Okay, when you talk about valency, is the number of electrons in the atomic shell. All right, so let's look at what element is atomic number 14, starting from sodium, which is 11, followed by magnesium, which is 12, aluminium, which is 13, then silicon, which is 14. Okay, so we know that silicon is as the atomic number 14 and the electronic configuration is 2 comma 8 comma 4 okay 2 8 4 making 14 so in the atom shell it has a valence electron of 4 either plus 4 or minus 4 so option d is very correct so do not forget to click on the like button tap on the subscription button and click on bell notification so you can get the updates as we upload the videos so we have question 27 what volume of oxygen will remain after reacting 8 centimeter cube of hydrogen gas with 20 centimeter cube of oxygen gas okay so let's go to our whiteboard so that we can produce answer a correct solution to this question okay so reaction between hydrogen gas okay to oxygen okay gas to give you water all right so we can see that two moles of the mole the mole ratio here okay two moles of hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen to give us two moles of water okay so from the question we are told eight centimeter cube so this is the initial volume okay so we have eight centimeter cube react with 20 or before the 
reaction began. So we have eight centimeter cube present with is to be reacted with 20 centimeter cube of oxygen to give us unknown amount of the product okay so for now we don't really know this is the amount that are available before the reaction began so in the course of the reaction reacting volume will be eight centimeter cube so we know that two moles of hydrogen will react with one mole of oxygen so that implies that eight centimeter cube okay of hydrogen we react with four centimeter cube of oxygen okay to give us this isn't it so that implies that the volume after the reaction would be eight minus eight that is zero okay 20 minus 4, that is 16. Then we have 8. Okay, so this is our consign. So after the whole reaction, we know that 16 centimeter cube of oxygen is left after the reaction. So if we go through our options together, option D is very correct. Question 28. If one of the following oxides is heated with hydrogen or carbon using a Bunsen burner, it is not reduced to the metal. Which one is it? Okay, so we know that hydrogen is a very strong reducing agent. In short, it reduces the oxides of metals like copper, iron, lead, zinc, and what have you. So, if we look at all of these options I've mentioned, considering the activity series, okay, so you will see that all of this lead, copper, including tin, zinc, and iron, they are reduced, okay, by hydrogen, except for magnesium, which is far above all of these. So, all of these options put together, we know that magnesium oxide is not reduced by its reaction with hydrogen or carbon so option B is very correct question 29 okay the IUPAC name for the structure of this hydrocarbon we are seeing here is what this is very easy to tackle okay just do something like this for yourself you see this uh, this chain here just make it straight so if you make it straight with your mental ability what you are going to have is CH3 CH then this is underneath this is underneath this second chain here, okay? Then this, then this. So if you count the longest carbon chain, that is one, count the C's that we have, one, two, three, four. That is butane. And you can see that the acyl group is being attached to the second chain, okay? The second carbon. So that makes it two methyl butane, okay? So the correct option is two methyl butane option c and this two methyl butane it has a, a molar mass of 72.15 gram per mole and a density of 616 kilogram per meter cube okay so option c is very correct remember that the link in the description below takes you to the my school website where several solution providers are waiting for you to ask your questions so answers and solutions can be provided for you within moments Okay, so now let's tackle the next question we have here. An aqueous solution of a metal salt M, okay, gives a white precipitate with sodium hydroxide, which dissolves in excess sodium hydroxide, okay. With aqueous ammonia, the solution of M also gives a white precipitate, which dissolves in excess ammonia. Therefore, the cation in M is what? Okay, so anytime we are using an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide or ammonia or aqueous ammonia, what we're really looking for is to test for cations. Okay, so if we look through all of these our options, all of these uh, cations that we see here, they are involved in this test. Okay, so but calcium ion or calcium cations are the only ions that are insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide so already calcium is being screened out okay lead is even not considered 
in this context. So the, where the remaining competition is, is between aluminum and zinc. Okay, so this is how you know the difference. When we now go a step further from the question, with aqueous ammonia, the solution of M also gives a white precipitate which dissolves in excess ammonia. So it is only zinc ion okay, that dissolves in excess ammonia. Aluminum ion is insoluble in excess ammonia. So the correct option that we have here is option A, zinc ion. So this is where we really find it. Okay? In case you have better steps in any of the or for any of the questions we have tackled so far, please use the comment section below indicate the question number and the solutions you would like to share so we have question 31 what is the concentration of a solution containing two grams of sodium hydroxide in 100 cm cube of solution okay so we are giving this uh, sodium as 23 oxygen as 16 and hydrogen as one okay so we are asked to find the concentration of the solution so remember that molar concentration equals to mass concentration that's in gram per dm cube okay over molar mass so at first the molar mass of um, the compound sodium hydroxide so molar mass of sodium hydroxide okay will be 23 we are giving from the question okay just one mole of each just one atom of each of the elements that are combined together so plus oxygen which is 16 plus hydrogen which is 1 23 plus 16 that is 39 plus 1 that is 40 so the molar mass here is 40 okay so i recall that we are giving our volume in cm cube so we have to bring it to dm cube so recall that 1000 cm cube equals 1 dm cube. Okay? So therefore 100 cm cube will be equals to x. When we cross multiply, okay, we are going to have x times 1000 equals to 100 times 1. Dividing both sides by 1000. So we have 1 over 10. 1 over 10 or 0 0.1 dm cube. Okay, so we already have our volume and recall that mass conk, mass concentration, okay, goes to mass, all right, over volume. So mass in gram over volume in dm cube, okay, which is equals to the mass we are giving, we are giving 2 grams over volume which we have gotten here is 0 0.1 or 1 over 10 okay when you divide this it's going to give you 20 how did i know this is 2 divided by 0 0.1 which then means 2 divided by 1 over 10 okay this implies 2 over 1 times 10 over 1 the street sign 2 times 10 that is 20 over 1 times 1 that is 1 20 over 1, that still gives you what? 20. Okay, so I'm just trying to show us a derivative of how we got our answer without using calculator. So very well, let's proceed. So already we have our mass concentration. Remember the unit is in gram per dm cube. So let's just fix this in into this formula here. So we have our mass concentration equals the mass concentration, which is 20 over our molar mass of sodium hydroxide which is 40 so 2 year 1 2 year 2 so we have 1 over 2 or 0 0.5 remember the unit of mass concentration uh, molar concentration is a mole per dm cube so our answer will be 0 0.5 or 0 0.50 mole per dm cube so let's counter our options together and see which option is correct Option B is very correct. So we have question 32. How many atoms are present in 6.0 gram of magnesium? Okay. 
given that magnesium equals to 24 and this is number the Avogadro's number equals to 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 moles okay so let's just tackle this this is very easy recall that one mole of what elements are we talking about magnesium one mole of magnesium contains this 24 grams isn't it therefore x moles will contain 6.0 or 6 grams okay to make it short so when we cross multiply okay we would have x times 24 equals to 6 times 1 x moles that we are looking for dividing both sides by 24 okay so this is 6 year 1 6 year 4 all right so 1 divided by 4 that gives you 0 0.25 moles and remember that number of particles equals the number of moles number of moles times the Avogadro's number the Avogadro's number okay isn't it so we have number of moles which is 0 0.25 all right times the Avogadro's number which is 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23 by the time we multiply this together we should have 1.51 times 10 raised to the power 22. So if we scan through our options together, realize that option C is very correct. So we have question 33. The radioisotope used in industrial radiography for the rapid checking of faults in wet and casting is what? It's actually cobalt 60, option C. Aside from that, it's also used in medicine, okay, in medical practices for radiation therapy probably to also treat um, cancer also is using food radiation for sterilization process so in summary option c is very correct cobalt 60. so we have question 34 beryllium and aluminium have similar properties because they have what okay so let's first let's consider their group Beryllium is in group 2. Remember, it has atomic number of 4. That is 2, 2. Why aluminium belongs to group 3? 2, 8, 3. That is for their electronic configuration. So, of course, they do not belong to the same group, the same period. Now, we've dealt with the group. Uh, I mentioned that beryllium is group 2, aluminium is group 3. So, considering their period, beryllium just has uh, two shells, okay? two in the first two electrons in the first shell in the shell and two electrons in the outermost shell why for aluminium it has three shells okay so this is period two period three so they are still not similar because of same group or same period and their position diagonally to each other on the periodic table has nothing to do with their similarity in properties okay so the reason why they are similar in property according to the context of options we are provided with is because they are both metal so option a is very correct so question 35 okay so we have this uh, reactant side and we have this product side so in the equation shown above the equilibrium constant is given by what so let's solve this out for ourselves so at first let's just write out the equation this should be in small letter, okay? To give you the products of... Um, then we have... QH. So the equilibrium constant is represented by Kc. This C just shows that it is in concentration, okay? So that is very easy. That's just uh, the products over reactants okay product of our reactants very well so this is what we just do all of these small letters that we are seeing they represent the number of moles okay of the product or reactant in the entire reaction so this number of moles will become their indices okay so let me just show you what i mean so for the product side we have g we use square brackets then this is the most the most becomes the index okay so this bracket this square bracket we are using shows that the concentration is in mole per dm cube okay 
then we have this product H raised to power Q okay over the reactants that we have we have reactant E raised to power M okay then we have reactant F raised to power n. So this is our equilibrium con constant. So if we scan through our options together, option C is very correct. Do not forget that the link in the description below is made available for you. So you can be taken to the My School website for the purpose of you purchasing the My School mobile app or the My School software so that you can prepare and plan effectively towards your coming exam. So we are tackling question number 36. We have the first reaction. This is copper oxide. This is black in color plus ammonia. Gives you copper, okay, water, and uh, nitrogen gas, okay? We have um, ammonia plus um, chlorine glass. Gives you hydrochloric acid and nitrogen, okay? Then we have ammonia and um, oxygen to give you six moles of water, okay? plus nitrogen gas okay so the reactions represented by the equations above demonstrate what this actually demonstrates the reducing properties of ammonia okay ammonia is a very active reducing agent okay this is due to the presence of the nitrogen atom that has oxidation number of minus three so option c is very correct so you don't have to forget that you have to click on this like button tap on the subscribe button and click on bell notifications so you can get informed as the next videos are being uploaded just for you question 37 the salt that reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid to produce a pungent smelling gas which decolorizes acidified purple potassium tetrazo manganese 7 solution is actually sodium sulfite okay sodium sulfite reacts with acl to produce sulfur dioxide okay and this has a rotten egg smell very irritating smell and also this gas sulfur dioxide is a reducing agent it reacts with this oxidizing agent here and it decolorizes it from purple to colorless so option b is very correct so question 38 the refreshing and characteristic taste of soda water and other soft drinks is as a result of the presence of what? Of carbon four oxide, okay, or carbon dioxide. This is actually added as a protective measure, okay, to retain that freshing um, taste and also to prevent the growth of bacteria in the liquids, in the soft drinks or in the sodas you may have it. And also it is found that um, this carbon four oxide also helps to improve digestion, okay, which helps to increase um, the rate of swallowing or the ability to swallow better and also reduces constipation. That does not mean that generally soft drinks and soda are healthy for human consumption on a certain scale, which is relative to individuals. So, in summary, we can say that the refreshing and characteristic taste of soda water and other soft drinks is as a result of the presence of carbon 4 oxide option a question 39 which of the following are mixtures okay so let's consider petroleum is a mixture of um, hydrocarbons okay rubber latex is just about rubber being harvested from rubber tree or other trees as in the form of latex the latex is kind of a milky sticky liquid okay we have a vulcanizer solution, okay, this is a mixture of um, phosphorus, rubber that is dissolved in benzene, okay, and sulfur. Then we have carbon disulfide, this is properly as carbon disulfide, okay, this is definitely a compound, this is the only compound that we have here. So, all of this except carbon disulfide or carbon sulfide for this question, all of them are mixtures except this so we have one two three so which option carries one two three that is option a so option a is very correct remember that we have several solution providers on the my school website 
So you can use the link in the description below that takes you to the My School website where you can ask your questions right now and within moments, solution providers will prefer solutions to your questions. So let's tackle question number 40. A balanced chemical equation obey the law of what? It actually obeys the law of conservation of mass, okay? In a particular chemical reaction, there is neither a gain nor loss in the mass of the product when you compare it to the reactant, okay? So mass of the product equals to the mass of the reactant. So the correct option is option A. Then perhaps you have better steps or better explanations to any of the questions we have tackled so far. Please use the comment section below, indicate the question number and the solutions you would like to share. Question 41. When air which contains the gases, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, water vapor and the rare gases is passed through alkaline pyrogalol, okay? and they and then over quick line the only gases left are what okay so just know that alkaline solution of pyrogalol absorbs oxygen okay why the quick line has high affinity for carbon dioxide and water vapor so if we are going to take this together oxygen is gone carbon dioxide and water vapor is gone because of the quick line okay so what we have left is just um uh, nitrogen and rare gases. So option D is very correct. Question number 42. In the laboratory preparation of oxygen, the gas cannot be collected by downward displacement of air because, why? Because the density of air is nearly the same as that of oxygen. Density of air is 1.225 and density of oxygen is 1.429 so they are very near like they are nearly the same so that is why we can't collect oxygen by displacement of air so basically option b is very correct question 43 so we have um potassium chlorate okay then we have potassium chloride and oxygen given off as the product of the reactions okay so we have the question the importance of the catalyst in the reaction above is that what is the function the can't the catalyst here is manganese for oxide so what it does is that um considering potassium chlorate okay it decomposes and slowly it releases the oxygen in it so to help the reaction go better and faster the manganese 4 oxide catalyst introduced makes the reaction to take place more rapidly even at a lower temperature okay so that makes option d correct so let's put it together now the importance of the manganese 4 catalyst in the reaction above is that the reaction takes place more rapidly at a lower temperature so option d for emphasis sake so we have question 44 which of the following is used to power steam engines okay so steam engines have been powered by coal wood or oil okay once these are burnt okay they produce heat which converts converts um, water to steam okay which is used to power these um, steam engines okay so option b is correct so we've come to the end of this segment but there are still more clips to be released so you just have to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get updated as soon as these videos are uploaded just for you